You may have already seen videos on the internet showing some divine intervention where a person narrowly escapes a serious accident unharmed. Some attribute it to luck, while others believe these interventions happen because of God's angels. Could they be around us all the time? Can they even intervene in larger events, such as a nation at war, for example? In today's video, I'm going to bring you a surprising revelation about the Archangel Michael, showing what he is doing right now. And at the end, I'll share an astonishing testimony of a moment when celestial angels literally defended the Israelis in a recent battle. Before we begin, I ask that you subscribe to my channel. It's very quick, it's free. Just click on the subscribe button, which is right below the video. Next to it, a bell icon will appear. Also, activate the bell and select the All option so that you receive the upcoming videos directly on your phone, okay? I want to help you in your walk with God every day, so come join me. Now let's get started. Brothers and sisters, angels are everywhere, and many deliverances that occur are indeed because of them. The Bible is filled with examples of angels acting in people's lives, and it categorizes them into a hierarchy. There are the seraphim, cherubim, living creatures, and the archangel Michael. The seraphim are part of a class of angels with a very important position in heaven. In Isaiah chapter 6, it says they have great responsibilities and stay near the throne of God. Cherubim also have authority. They work directly for God, fulfilling special tasks. They stay close to the Lord's throne, ready to do anything God commands. The living creatures are another species of spiritual beings around God's throne. They resemble a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. They are very powerful and worship God day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And then there's the Archangel Michael. Passages about him show that he is a kind of leader among the other angels, being more powerful and having greater authority. It was he who fought with the devil when the enemy sought the body of Moses, and he will lead the army of angels in the battle against the dragon, as described in Revelation chapter 12. What you may not know is that the Archangel Michael, besides being a powerful angel, has a very specific role in the spiritual realm, which is to protect the nation of Israel. In the book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 21, it is written that the Archangel Michael is the prince of the heavenly realm of Israel. In the same book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 10, it states that he is the great prince who protects his people. This means that the nation of Israel has a specific guardian angel. He has been active in the spiritual life of this nation since time immemorial, working for the well-being of the people living there, and also in economic, cultural, and even geopolitical contexts, safeguarding Israel during times of war. To make it clearer how this operates in the spiritual realm, let me draw a comparison with the physical world. Have you heard of the Iron Dome? In recent years, Israel has faced numerous aerial attacks through powerful missiles, and these missiles would have left Israel in ruins if not for this incredible machine called the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome is an ultra-advanced technology that, through its system, calculates the trajectory of an enemy missile and intercepts it in the air, causing it to explode in the sky. This defense system is highly coveted by many nations' leaders because it represents the pinnacle of anti-aircraft defense technology. The Iron Dome can locate the enemy through its artillery radar, and similarly, the Archangel Michael works for the nation of Israel, tracking the devil and battling against him and his army in the celestial realms. Throughout history we see that every king, when raising an army, not only carefully chose his soldiers and prepared them for the day of battle, but also appointed a general. This general would be responsible for conveying battle strategies, meeting points, and attack locations to the other soldiers. This is how a chief of an army works, always strategically, and I cannot imagine that Michael operates differently, as the word of God affirms that he is the leader of all other angels. So I will now explain why the archangel Michael stands guard all the time to ensure that the nation of Israel is not wiped out from humanity. We Christians believe that God has a special plan for Israel, and this protection is related to the second coming of our Lord Jesus. We know that Christ promised to return one day, but he will only return when the Jewish people recognize and accept him as their savior. When Jesus was on earth, his own people did not believe that he was the Messiah, the sent one of God, and that's why Christ wept deeply on the Mount of Olives. He uttered the following words, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, 
How often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Here we clearly see that Jesus will only return when the Jews cry out for help, saying, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this will happen after Israel is surrounded by all its enemies at the end of the Great Tribulation. This prophecy preceding Jesus' return must be fulfilled, and the devil knows this very well. Therefore, it is necessary for God to protect Israel through the Archangel Michael, so that in the future, the Jewish people recognize that Jesus is the Savior sent by God. If the entire nation of Israel were to be wiped out from humanity, as their enemies desire, then Jesus would not return to this land, understood? God needs the Jewish people to continue existing for this prophecy to be fulfilled. Remember what I told you at the beginning of this video about the recent moment in history when angels literally protected Israel. Well, in the year 1973, an armed conflict occurred between Israel and the United Nations led by Egypt and Syria. This conflict was called the Yom Kippur War. The war began when Egypt and Syria launched a surprise attack on Israel on the holiest day of the Jewish calendar, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. As they were caught off guard, and enemies were coming from all sides, the Israeli military found themselves trapped with few tanks at their disposal. In other words, there wasn't sufficient protection, and the entire nation of Israel was at risk of being annihilated. That's right, but it's at this moment that a great miracle occurred. While Syrian troops began to invade with tanks, a significant sign appeared in the sky, and the Syrians decided to retreat, giving up the attack. Afterward, reporters approached the Syrian commander to inquire about the reason for the withdrawal, and his response was astonishing. He said that as they advanced with their tanks, soldiers began to see numerous angels flying, and a large hand descending from the sky commanded the soldiers to stop and abandon the attack plan. Thus, the soldiers fled, demonstrating God's great faithfulness to the people of Israel. May this testimony serve as encouragement for you, who are a Christian, as the Bible states that angels are sent by God to help all those who will receive salvation. Have you ever considered that, at this very moment, there might be angels around you, guarding you in all your ways? Of course, you shouldn't pray to them or worship them. They are there only to fulfill their role, which is to protect you. The only angels seeking exclusive worship are the fallen angels, that is, the demons. Therefore, it's important to know that angels help us, but they do not take our orders. So when we need help, we should pray directly to God in the name of Jesus, as Christ alone is our intercessor. Consider what the Apostle Paul said. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus intercedes, the angels come to our aid and help us, whether in the Old or the New Testament. We always see examples of angels working on behalf of the children of God. For instance, when Peter was imprisoned for preaching the word, the church prayed for him, and in response to the people's cry, the Lord sent an angel to free the apostle. Peter was in such a deep sleep that the Bible says the angel had to strike him to wake him up. The chains fell from his wrists, the prison door opened, and Peter walked away. This shows that these spiritual beings can even materialize and come to us with God's purpose. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2, it is written, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Notice that the Word of God affirms that we can receive angels into our homes, as seen in the example of Lot, Abraham's nephew, who received the visit of angels in his house to deliver his family from the imminent destruction upon Sodom and Gomorrah. In addition to being able to rely on God's angels in moments of deliverance, we can also believe in a commander more powerful than the Archangel Michael. Isaiah prophesied about this powerful commander and called him the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus Christ. Soon, all nations will know his power, bringing peace to the people when he returns from heaven to reign on the earth and defeat the devil. Jesus is above any angel, principality, 
or power. His name is above all other names, and by His grace the Son of God will always give orders to His angels concerning us. Isn't that wonderful? Therefore, we should praise and exalt the name of Jesus. So tell me in the comments, have you ever experienced deliverance by an angel? Have you had a moment when you received a miracle or were even comforted by God? You can be sure it was an angel, and I want you to write about it in the comments. It will encourage people to trust in God's care for them. Amen? I hope this video has strengthened your faith, and now I ask you to share it with as many people as possible, and I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you powerfully. A big hug.